What is up everybody? Chris from Team Aquascape. Myself and the boys are out here today and today we're going to be adding a wetland filter onto an already gorgeous ecosystem pond. Check it out. So, like I said, today we are in a residential neighborhood here about 15-20 minutes from our shop. We have a small probably a uh, 8 by 11 ecosystem pond, nice little waterfall off the side, but the client has over 50 fish in here between goldfish, comets, koi. I think there's also a hyphen shark in there as well, but we are going to be adding a constructed wetland filter onto the side of this thing. So the boys and I are already here. They're already putting together the aqua blocks as you can see, but let me take you through this really cool meandering path and turn the camera on and show you our palette for the day. I don't know if you can hear it, but the sound is amazing and there it is. Just a gorgeous, pristine water feature. I mean, this is something off a cover of a magazine. You can see all the little fish that she's got in here. The homeowner is very, very, very fond of her fish, as well as her water feature. Without making this bigger, she's looking to upgrade her biofiltration on here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, the section where the irises are, we are going to pull those out and we're gonna create a small wetland filter back over there off the edge. It's almost look like an extension of the pond. It will be elevated a little bit, so we'll get a little babbly brook water fall so we've got a little bit of work to do just pull some plants out but over in this area here is where that wetland filter is going to go so it'll be quite the update for this thing definitely an upgrade as far as the filtration on it so enough gabbing for me let's set up the time lapse and get this thing rolling Okay, so you can see we made light work of the irises that were clumped up over here. There's a fish cave actually underneath there, which is a really cool design element. Over here, you see some orange spray paint on the ground. This is the area for our six small aqua blocks. Um, and then back over in that corner is gonna be where our snorkel goes in. Centipede will run right along through here and we'll bring the plumbing that we're adding from a new Aqua Surge 2000. It'll be two inch line running this way, coming in through here and it'll dump down somewhere into there to plumb the wetland filter. So right now it's dig, dig, dig get that soil out of there as soon as possible then we'll get our fabric liner fabric snorkel centipede then our aqua blocks and then we'll do our um, couple different layers of substrate in there as well So we've got excavation almost complete. Looks like they are digging the trough for the centipede currently. The snorkel's already been dug out. We've got the hole for our aqua blocks, um, which is this big rectangle space in through here. Remember, we're gonna bring that two inch line up over the liner and go down into the centipede, which will sit. We've got a half centipede out here. If we were doing a bigger bog, something with more aqua blocks, we would have ended up with a full centipede. However, we are just doing a half today. One tall snorkel will end up probably cutting it down to about here so that just the lid is above water and six aqua blocks, six small aqua blocks. We've got a 15 by 15 liner and a 30 by 15 piece of underlayment so that we can put underlayment on the top and underneath the liner to get that extra insurance that we're always looking for. So Matt's just going to finish cleaning up the hole. Once we get the fabric liner fabric in, then we get our snorkel right here and the half centipede over there by Corey. And uh, then we'll start throwing cobbles on top, which is that bigger kind of a softball size strata that the bacteria are going to work their way through and then they'll go up through a mix of pond gravel and then eventually upflow and then overflow into the pond. We shot elevations and uh, you can see we've drained a little bit of water out of the pond from when we first started. The reason we did that is we wanted to get those irises out um, that were over in this area over through here. It turns out that we will be able to pull off an overlap. So the water level coming out of the bog will be about that height right there. That'll give us a six inch drop into the pond. Now what we're looking for is an overlap where the the liner from the bog filter is going to overlap the pond liner which will go underneath it but we want that six inch elevation change so that we're not going to worry about water backing up between the two liners and leaking out the low edge of the pond on that side going underneath the bog liner so it's super important that we shoot the elevations especially when they're super close like that six inches is our standard obviously the more elevation change the better it just makes us feel a little bit more comfortable but that is what's going to happen there and then that will just just be a little babbly brook type waterfall on this little cove. We'll disguise that portion of the wetland filter so it won't look so rectangular and square. We'll bring the liner in, put some boulders over the top, but it's gonna be a really, really neat area 
for aquatic plants, also a supplemental waterfall over here. Hopefully we can make it look as good, if not better than that beautiful waterfall right there. I love this ecosystem pond. It just has such a great design. It's got awesome aquatic plants, um, not only in the pond with the lilies, we've got some pickerel, some of the small cattails. They had some irises over there, but I love the edge water stuff as well. So you've got some creeping Jenny in here, some forget-me-nots. You can see a big bundle of corkscrew rush over there. There's also some annual vinca planted along the side, which is a really neat effect, kind of tying in with some of the flower color of the water lilies. This is what a beautiful backyard water garden is supposed to look like. It is absolutely stunning, and I can't wait to add this little addition, get it fixed up, and it's going to look incredible when we're all done. Sweet, so fabric is in. This is a 15 by 15 piece of fabric. And we're gonna drop in the 15 by 15 liner, then some more fabric, then we'll put our snorkel centipede, then our small aqua blocks in over the top. All right, so aqua blocks, snorkels, half centipede, plumbing is in. Now what we're doing is we are going to start filling around the snorkel with cobbles, and then we'll eventually layer this entire footprint of these aqua blocks with these anywhere from four to about 12 inch cobbles along the top here, and then it's all bog gravel from there. That right there is where the overlap is going to take place, our little Babbly Brook waterfall. But right now what these boys are doing is getting the second layer of substrate on here, and that is the pond gravel so this is going to sit on top of these cobbles down in here and we'll probably get about probably about a foot or so of gravel in there so we'll use probably about a ton and a half maybe two tons in there and then we'll also use it for along the edges and that kind of stuff so that's what's happening now Well, folks, um, unfortunately, elevations did not work out to pull off a successful overlap. After shooting what was existing water level in the pond with a transit, we determined that we weren't able to get the proper elevation change between the two liners in order to pull off a successful overlap. So what we're doing now is we are digging back behind, getting as much slack in that existing pond liner as we can. We're gonna pull it back, get it nice and taut, and then clean and dry, get our double-sided tape down, and then seam the bog liner, which is sitting right there over the top of it, and then we'll run a piece of the, our double-sided tape over the top of that. So we're just digging a little trough so that we can lay that uh, liner back and then start to seaming. Okay, we are in the home stretch of this seam. The biggest challenge that we had was the existing pond liner had quite a bit of scale buildup, so we had to scour that with some Scotch-Brite pads and get it all nice and clean. We also, it is very, very humid out here. You can kind of see Juan is just dripping sweat right now. So we're fighting the heat because we want to make sure that that liner is nice and dry and we're not ruining our prime. Looks like we're on the last, I don't know, maybe about six feet of the seam. Once we get this done, then we can start putting in some of those big rocks to really frame out this bog area and have it look more like an extension of the pond. We'll have a little four inch, five inch Babbly Brook waterfall, but it's going to be really, really, really cool. Well, you can see Juan cutting all of the excess liner off of the back side of the bog. Here is the constructed wetland filter, folks. It is rocked in. While he's working on that, we've got Matt and Corey over here working on plumbing in the new pump. They put a two inch MPT on 
right there coming out of the back of the bulkhead on the close side of the skimmer. They're going to be installing the new check valve right there along with the new Aqua Surge 2000 pump that will go in and that is what's going to feed the two inch pipe that Corey's going to connect to that MPT he just installed with the silicone. If you have any uh, questions on the installation of a skimmer, there should be a link in the description below. We got Juan hosing off the uh, sidewalk, which means our bog filter is complete. We only clean up until after everything else is done, right? Yeah. <laughs> So the whole goal, guys and gals, was to make this not look like an afterthought, but more just a natural progression of the pond as it carries back through. This is a Biofalls on steroids. It's a six small block constructed wetland filter. We used about two tons of gravel on top. We've got a ton of four to eight cobbles underneath that. Let me bring the camera over here and show you just a really kind of cool meandering babbly brook kind of waterfall is coming out of there we didn't want to create something that was super tall and have it look out of scale with that part of the yard because they already had the existing waterfall that really fit that space well we like the change in elevations if it would have been the same height it would have looked very very awkward but here is the back side of it um, there's our snorkel cap so that's going to be where we're going to drop the clean out pump to clean it out in the spring but you can see we've got a little bit different edge treatments all the way around we've got some gravel in through here boulder 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 some smaller boulders we terraced back around to help blend that grade change into the existing berm just a nice little shade not too rocky it just turned out really 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 nice and it looks like it all has is part of the pond that helps uh, by and large because we used the same type of stone that was used on the original project which is the granite that you see it would have looked weird had we tried to mix and match stones so really glad that we did that not too bad for a day's work I know it looks dark out here but it's actually only about four o'clock our time there might be some thunderstorms rolling in we're not quite sure so the guys did a great job of doing the final push so we're gonna top this thing off with water and then get the heck out of here so i hope you guys enjoyed it until next time